Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In the previous demos in this series, we have created an Excel spreadsheet with two tables, the templates that of tasks that are to be done on a recurring basis, and tasks that are instances of these templates. And we've also added a button and a script that updates the tasks on a daily basis, created a Power Automate flow that runs the script automatically. And here you see we've also created a very simple app. Here it's running in the iPhone uh, emulator and it allows you to say that tasks are done and it will filter it out and in a few seconds it updates in Excel. We're going to keep working on this, keep improving it, but as you see it has some basic, very good functionality in my opinion. We track if these tasks are done here in Excel. So we're going to focus in Excel for a while, but now we want to add some more information here. We want to add two more columns. Who completed the task? Done by and when? Done at. So done by and done at. We want that to be stored. Now, there are two things we need to do. Of course, we need to go over to the app and modify the app so that it stores that extra information. Now it's just storing this, but also we need to modify so that the script actually writes in those new columns because when it's adding now it's adding an array of four columns and now we have six so now the script's going to fail so we don't want that of course so let's go into the code editor and uh, modify our script so we're going to edit that script <coughs> and here is a method that adds this template object as a task in the workbook and as you see here is the critical row that creates this array and adds it to the row. We need to modify that array now. We, we're just adding two columns. So we could make it simple and just do comma like that. And now we're adding two columns. Now we've fixed the problem. But as you see, this array is getting bigger and bigger. So I want to make this a bit more readable, a bit more expandable. So I'm going to create a new method here in this class. It's going to be a public method called to new task array and that's going to take no parameters but it's going to return an array of uh, strings array and string um, here we're going to code that and then we're going to uh, declare a variable let uh, new array equals and that's going to be an array of strings of course and that's just going to be have an empty array to start with like that and then we're going to push these variables here into that array these ones right that's the one we want so we want to take that away and instead use this to new task array we'll call that method so now we have to just push those things in here so that's what we're doing so new array push the first one is the ID, and that's going to be a new uh, date. Get time. And we're going to make sure that's a string when we return it. Right, so that's the ID. And then we're going to push the, uh, the first, that's the first column, and we're going to have the title. So new array push this title. Doesn't really need a comment. We know what that does. And then we have the date. A new array, push the uh, new date. We're going to actually have all of that here. There we go. So that's the date of, of the task. And then we're going to add the status, empty, and the done by, empty, and the done at, empty. So we can just copy this row here and do empty there and to make this more readable here we're going to add the status and that's going to be the done by and that's going to be the done at and then we're going to return the whole thing in my opinion this is more readable and of course more expandable when we're going to modify this in the future so as you see, we created the new method here on the template class, and we're calling that 
new task array in this uh, method add as task. So let's try it out and see if it works. So first of all, we need to set two of these tasks. Now the next date for those are is today. So let's do another of the send invoices too. All right, then we run this uh, script now. And let's see if we had any more tasks there. I should have checked before how, how many we had. There we go. But it seems, yes, we got two new ones there. Let's run it again. And you see, see these dates have been uh, pushed into the future now. So it seems to work. Let's try it again. Let's make all of them due today. So we'll have four new, so it will be very visible. I can't do a fill down. I have to do a copy. There we go. And now let's run the task. So now we should have a bunch more new tasks. Yes, we do. So everything is working fine. Then we can jump over into the Power app and start modifying that. So it saves the new data also. Let's actually go back and clear all these three from being done. So we get all the data. So what we need to modify is here when the user clicks on this button here, on the next arrow. So let's actually rename that one to save a task. We can actually do a BTN, a bit of old school prefixing there. So I know that that's a working as a button. All right. So now we just add more properties to this here. First, of course, we need to refresh the data source. And then I'm adding new uh, values here. First of all, down at will be uh, the time right now. So we're just going to do a now function first. But then we want to format that. So I'm going to use the text function and then put the format in here. So the format of that is going to be long date. That will work fine. And then just put the user full name. And then we close that object. We should have, of course, the done by. There we go. All right, let's get all of these comma or parentheses correct but this is the formula that we're looking for so let's go through it here now the um when we can actually put some row breaks in here to make it more readable so done is the status done at is the long date format of now and done by is the user full name comma there and the done by there okay there we have a nice looking formula and that should work so let's save this now and let's preview the app and then we uh, close one of these tasks where we can put it next to excel again and see what happens we'll close the scripting window here and just run it there and same ui and now we're seeing in a few seconds we should see this updating there we go done by done at yep it's all saving as it should very good we could work on that format, but uh, I'll do that in the next video. And uh, that's it. That shows you how to add extra columns and save some more information into the Excel spreadsheet. Thank you very much for watching this demonstration.